The main difference between living and non-living things is that living organisms actively attempt to minimize the likelihood of death. The specific indicator of the likelihood of death is stress, as defined by Hans Selye. But how can attempting to minimize stress dictate the behavior of living beings? In the late 18th century, Giuseppe Ludovico de Lagrange Tournier introduced the general equations of motion for physical systems, the Lagrangian equations, together with the Lagrangian, a function of a system's position and velocity. Half a century later, Sir William Hamilton completed the development of the basis of modern theoretical physics with the introduction of the action and the Hamiltonian principle of least action. Unfortunately, both Hamilton's principle of least action and the original Lagrangian dynamics are limited. They are time reversible, so they cannot be applied to living systems. Until recently, it's been accepted that classical physics can only describe non-living physical systems. Another approach would be required to describe living beings. In his recent book, Professor Utziel Sandler demonstrates how physics can, in fact, describe living objects. All it needed was a modification. The author shows that while Lagrange's equations remain unchanged, a more general Lagrangian function can also depend on the action, together with its conjugated Planck's variable. These new generalized Lagrangian equations, defined by the S Lagrangian, are time irreversible. Assigning stress as the Hamiltonian action to be minimized allows the S Lagrangians to describe a wide range of living organisms' behavior. The generalized Lagrangian simulates chemotaxis, with the movement of a group of bacteria responding to a single food source, where the stress being avoided is starvation. Living systems actively counteract degradation using homeostasis, which maintains stability of physiological functions. Cessation of homeostasis leads to inevitable death. When Walter B. Cannon discovered homeostasis, he assumed that this self-regulating phenomenon resulted from an organism's predisposition to decrease their stress. All types of homeostatic behavior can be described by an S. Lagrangian if we assume that damage leads to increased stress, while generating activity of the organism and the release of endogenous morphine could decrease stress. The opioid crisis is estimated to have cost more than 2.5 trillion US dollars during the four years from 2015 to 2018, killing more than 47,000 Americans in 2017 alone. The S. Lagrangian can demonstrate the dynamics of drug abuse impairing homeostasis. S. Lagrangian dynamics can describe hierarchy formation and dominance in communities of living species. If we assume that deviation between the real world and an individual's ideal world increases stress, while changing state and using homeostatic protection mechanisms decrease stress. The theory predicts three levels of dominance and hierarchy formation based on the length of time group members take to cope with stress and their stress thresholds. S. Lagrangian dynamics can describe the behavior of living species in the environment. Pressure from neighborhood species and unfavorable environments increases stress. Inner stress protection, regulating population densities and generating migration flow reduces stress. Assuming no particular dominance or intolerance exists between two species, their densities will initially decrease. A stable coexistence is achieved once population pressure is adjusted and both species occupy the entire habitat peacefully. If one species dominates and the species are strongly intolerant of one another, the dominant species invades an area of high food supply, occupied by the weaker species. The weaker species is suppressed and abolished from the habitat. Ecological catastrophe results in the elimination of both species. Unlike war, extinction transpires with low levels of stress. The damage is not permanent. The habitat will recover over time.